Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today in this demonstration, we are going to cover a very important topic protecting your API operations with any anonymous calls or or in other way allowing API operations to be accessed by a valid user who has a valid roles and permission to perform the operation. So let's talk about the scenario wherein I have a user who has got the access to my application using my the Azure AD authentication. Here I have an API operation APIs and then it has got a bunch of operations. I would like a user to allow performing only specific role. If not, then it should be the other operations or access to other operation should be rejected straight away. Like I mentioned, we are going to use the Azure services. So for the demonstration, I'm going to use this configuration at the API management. So in between, I would have a API management services, which means that my APIs are going to be hosted inside the API management. Let's say this is what the scenario you might have. Then with the help of inbound policies within the API management, we will set those restrictions for a user to not to allow an operation if the user do not have a proper role configured. How do we do that? Let's look at the demonstration. So I have the API management instance created, which I have used in my previous demonstration and a service bus instance as well. If I open the API management instance, it has got currently I'm using a developer tier with no SLA. That's absolutely fine. My API management APIs has got a default echo API with the default operation. I have not changed anything on that. So whatever comes by default when I provision this API management, I'm going to use the same. So as you can see that it has got number of operations like get, post, put, head, delete and all. So as if you correlate with our diagram, let's say we would like a user to perform get operation or to perform post operation, but we do not want a user to perform delete or head or the other get operation. How do we restrict that? Let's look at that. To perform this entire setup, I need to configure the role for each of these operation. And then we would like to set up the permission on the specific roles. And let me show you how that will look like. So we would require to create an Azure Active Directory backend application. And that backend application would have bunch of roles for each of these operations. Then backend application, along with the backend application, we would create a service principle, right? And then along with that, we will create a client application. So this could be a client application or if you do uh, this client application is just now I'm creating for the demonstration. It could be a managed identity created for a resource. If your request is validated against the managed identity, let's say logic apps managed identity or the web application managed identity for this client, we are whichever role we or permission we would like to grant from this backend app, we will set those roles and permission to this client. And then in our API management operations, we would validate the incoming bearer token against this backend app application. So whoever or whichever user has access to this backend applications on a specific role, the role will be validated inside the API management. Let me show you how does it looks like. So first of all, I'm going to create these two applications in the Active Directory. So this is my Active Directory in Azure. I'm going to create a backend application. So I'm going to call it as in API OCS backend app. This is the application we are going to create. Let's register that. Now this backend application has successfully created. This is the client ID. We are going to note this particular client ID. At the moment, uh, there is no need of setting this 
client secret, redirect secret for this backend application, even not to about the backend URI. And then it has automatically created a service principle or enterprise application. If I click here, you can see that the manage the service principle application is automatically created for that application. Right. Let me set the application URI for this application. I'll just copy that, click here, add application ID URI. By default, it sets the application ID as in the application URI, but I'm going to change it to the name of the application. It's up to you if you want to use it as is, that's okay. Next, I'm going to create a new client ID application. So I'll call it as an OCS client ID client app. Same concept, I'll say the register that is also created here with the client app i'm going to create generate a secret here as per our discussion so let's call it as in secret and by default it will be generated for a month or so i'll copy this particular secret value and i'll copy the role the client id or application id as well because this is what we would require to generate a secret now we have both our client ID and backend applications. Now let's set the number of roles in the backend application. So I'll go to the app roles. We'll create new application role. We'll call it as an echo post because that's going to be the post. I'll set it this as is. This is for post operation. Similarly, I'll create echo get. Keep it as is. I'll create other operations. Echo put. So I've got all my roles for this application or for this backend app. So this backend app has got these many roles, right? Now, I'll go to the client application and I'll set the permissions on those roles. So I'll click here on the API permission, API dash OCS. This is the backend application. Next, select what all role you want, you would like to set this. I would say that I just would like to allow this client to perform this echo post this echo post operation so now you can see that it has got this roles i'll say grant admin permission is equal to yours okay the roles are set up we have got the client id and secret as well now let's go to the api management policies on this particular operation so let's say i would like to set a policy on the post right now it does not have any policies as such so it will basically allow everything or allow any user anonymous user to valid to run this operation but we would like to set the restriction and for that we are going to set the valid jwt token policy on this inbound section so this is jwt policy valid validate jwt policy the header name authorization so it will validate the value of authorization header and if it is failed, then it will send the HTTP code to 401 failed authorization error. This is what the error which you will receive as an user in case if there are any failures. I'll close the tag. Next, we need to set the how does it supposed to set the or validate the JWT token. So we are going to set the open API, open ID configurations, which is our default configuration. So it will validate the JWT token using this Microsoft online, the tenant ID, which is the tenant ID of my Azure AD subscription. Then the open ID, this is a standard URL, right? Now, next I would like to validate against the audience which is a backend application so this is a backend application which i need to set the backend audience here 
Now let's go to the backend audience or the backend app which we have. So this is my backend app. I'll copy the application ID of this backend app, which is this one. And this is what we need to set it here. Next, we need to check the roles during the validation. So I would like to see the requester or the request body or request header should have bearer token with this particular role. So we can see it at a source or the post. What is the role name? Let's go and check the roles we have, which is echo post. So we are going to say echo post. Save it. Now let's try and test this API operations from the API management itself. I'm going to click on send. And you can see that I'm getting this unauthorized error. Same thing I can copy here and run it from the postman. So I have the same request URL set here in the postman as well with this particular request body. Currently, we do not have any authorization set as such. So let's hit this URL and see if it works fine. As you can see that we are getting the 401 error, which is the same message which we have configured in our API management policy on authorized access token is missing or invalid. Now, what we need is we need an authorization token to be set up to generate the bear token from the postman using the client id secret i am using this url which is a standard url to generate a bearer token it is the same url which we have used it there as well so this is https login.microsoftonline.com then the id of your tenant this id i have set up in my environment variable which are configured here you can see that here are my environment variables which are this right next i need to provide the request body as in format data grant type as in client credentials then i need to pass the client id which we have created for the client application id which is a client id and then the secret which we have generated for the client id that is what we need to set Done. and then we need to provide next we need to provide the resource which is the scope of this bearer token so we'll go to the to set the scope we need to go to the backend app click on the overview and then from the application id uri we can use this id to set as any scope so we are not granting or generating a bearer token for to access everything it's not general so we are restricting a bearer token to perform operation on this particular backend app only so let's save this so that will generate a bearer token and once a bearer token is generated on the test script i'm reading the response body and i'm setting at the access token as in variable as an environment variable so that it i can use this access token into the next subsequent step let's click on the send and see if that generates the bearer token. The bearer token is successfully generated here. Now let's go to the API management to service operation. Here I will use the authorization set and choose the bearer token and same variable which we have set and the variable has got the same value. I'll save it and I'll run again. I'm still getting the 401 error. You might also get the same error. This may be due to the problem we have with our API money, with our app registration. What problem we have? Let's go to the application manifest. And you can see that here on the application manifest, you have the access token accept version, which is set to null. So this needs to set to value two then only it will work so i've set up this value two on the backend application i'll set the same at the client application as well i'll go to the manifest again save it that's done this you can also do with the 
You can also do with the help of Terraform if you are creating the Azure Ready application. This is a Terraform code to configure the Azure Ready application. You can set the value of that manifest request access token version to value 2 like this. Hopefully it should work now. Let me just try and run again. We need to regenerate the token because we have changed the value in the or the configuration in the application manifest. So uh, let's regenerate again. The value is regenerated. Uh, the latest access token has been set up. Now let's try and run again. So you can see that we are trying to get or uh, we are trying we are successfully able to run this API operation. Now, same thing I would like to let's say use the uh, HTTP GET operations uh, for example let me try and add a GET request here I'll use the same URL and we'll go to the API management I'll configure the same policy there on the GET operations and here we are going to pass as in GET value let's save it I'll make sure that we are using the same URL. So this is a get URL for an instance. As the current user has not got any access or permissions to perform the get operation, so it should not work. Right now I'm not using any authorization, so obviously it's going to fail. But even though if we will pass the authorization or the bearer token which we have set in the previous step it should not work let's see that i'm getting the same error now the reason is because the bearer token has got a role to perform only the post operation which we have set whereas we are trying to use the get operation now how do we validate that let's copy this bearer token value and we'll validate this value online So this is a JWT2 applications which we can use to validate the bearer token. So I'll paste it and you can see that this bearer token has the value or the audience value is been set up with this particular role, right? And this role has got the permission whereas the get role does not have any permission as such. Now if we go back to our client application and I'll set a role again and if I allow a user to perform the get operation as well then that will work fine as well I believe I'll go to the API slash OCS get operation similarly I'll use the, this operation as well okay I forget to grant the admin condition Admin, admin consent let me just rerun the pair token as well it's working fine now uh, because we are using the get operation and we got the 200 response it just we have to grant the admin permission and it was working fine so now if i validate the bearer token again uh, i should have two roles here let me just revalidate again you can see that we have got two roles get and post both so this is how you can use the rpac permissions with api management to perform a specific role based operation now with the same i instead of creating the client id what i can do is i can create a let's say logic app or app service and generate a manage identity with that logic app and using the audience and manage identity i can access the api management operations to or, or access the api management apis operation from the same concept instead of postman i can try and connect from the logic app which i can show you in the next demonstration but i hope you have got some idea how we are validating or configuring the rbac permissions with our api operation 
Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.